good to see you. I'm glad that everybody got to come. I appreciate it very much. We're going to have just a, be a brief service, but nevertheless, celebration of Monday Thursday. What a beautiful song to begin with, with Jesus praying at, uh, and with his disciples and uh, friends gathering for the Lord's Supper. And that's what we celebrate tonight, is the Jesus gathering with his friends, with the disciples as they prepare for that which is Easter, the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus. So thank you everybody for coming. Appreciate it. I want to begin with prayer as we begin the service. Do you have some special ones you want to mention? I'm glad that all of you are here. I know that all of you have some things that are going on. Sure, glad Charlie's back. Glad Charlie, I'm glad you're well again. I know that was quite an ordeal. I know many people have faced the same thing. The flu, flu symptoms. I know we remember Connie. Connie's having difficulty with her foot. Pray God's blessing again. Don. Lynn also. Claire and his family. Anybody else you want to remember in prayer in particular? Yes. Claire has shared it with us now. Nobody knows. Okay. Keep them in mind. The family of Clark Ford. Uh, Ford, last name? Uh-huh. He was a interim minister here. Oh, yes, I saw that. Uh, was he living here in Odessa? He lived in Midland. Okay. His wife, Maddie Bell, was in a nursery. It sounded like he lived close by. Yeah. He was uh, East Camp later for me. Black River, so. Well, you don't forget that. No. no you don't forget your, your leaders and your youth camp. I didn't, I didn't know he lived over. I've heard his name, seen his picture, but I never didn't know that he was living there. Well, let's remember that family also in prayer. Anybody else? Oh, Allie. Allie. Jody has a student that just had her tonsils taken out. Or covering at home. Yeah. And they talked about it. You heard her talking about it in here in the worship service. Yes. Oh, thank you for that. I'm surviving. I'm surviving. Yeah. And it does. All right, let's take all these words. Lord, we love you. We mentioned several prayer requests, Lord Jesus, and we bring all of them before you because we trust you. We trust you with our prayer requests. We trust you with the intimacy of our lives. And coming together on Monday Thursday is an intimate time, and we pray that tonight you lead us in our minds and hearts. Talk to us. Have your scripture lead us. And then also, Father, as we celebrate communion, connect us. We love you so very much. Bless the time that we spend together now. We pray in Jesus' name. The I am things that we've been looking at brings us to one that's found in, uh, of course, the Gospel of John, but in the seventh chapter of the Gospel of John. When Jesus has said that he is the protector of children, he's the defender of the weak, he also says that he is the light of the world. And I am saying of Jesus. And I am saying of Jesus. I am the light of the world. Jesus' proclamation of himself as the protector, and at this particular point as the light, is very significant because he's about to, in the message for Friday, tomorrow, going to be healing the man born blind. And that's significant that Jesus will proclaim himself the light of the world when that particular healing is about to take place. Light also in the fact that when he became our leader as light of the world, it's he who brings growth and color to everything. See that brings character to us. And in the Lord's Supper, we went entered into a covenant, a new covenant with God in which we are a covenanted people of God. We are children. Coming here tonight, the intimacy of those moments that Jesus had with his disciples is particularly significant in Holy Week as we remember the new humanity that Jesus created. The covenant that they made when they had the Lord's Supper together. The disciples saw it in a brand new life. Light again, he's the light of the world. 
lighting down their lives up in a new character, a new way of thinking, a new way of being. In fact, Isaiah used that passage in prophesying of Christ. Christ used that illustration. Light to describe the leader, the father to come. He will be the light to the Gentiles, to those who are lost without hope. And I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them and the crooked things straight. These things I will do with unto them and not forsake them. Of course, a parallel passage is Isaiah 9, which you know well. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. And they that dwell in the land of the shadow of death upon them hath the light shine. For thou hast broken the yoke of his burden, and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian, as in that day when Gideon and the people were delivered with overwhelming odds against them. And you and I face something very similar in the overwhelming odds of the life that we face in that covenant relationship with Jesus, that life that he is to us. In him we are little ones that are exalted. From this passage out of Isaiah, and it's the last passage I'll read from Isaiah chapter 60. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord shines upon you. He rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over His people. But the Lord rises upon you, and His glory appears over you. Nations come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. And then to the last part of that chapter. I will make peace your governor and righteousness your ruler. No longer will violence be heard in your land, nor ruin or destruction within your borders, but you will call your walls salvation and your gates praise. The sun will no more be your light by day, nor will the brightness of the moon shine on you, for the Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Your sun will never set again, and your moon will wane no more. The Lord will be your everlasting light. Your days of sorrow will end. Then will all your people be righteous, and they will possess the land forever. They are the shoot I have planted, the work of my hands, for the display of my splendor. The least of you will become a thousand, the smallest the mighty nation. I am the Lord. In His time, I will do this. God's promise to us is that we will become not only a great army, but become a whole new nation. The promises that are given to Israel have been given to us. In Him, the little ones have been exalted. And that was what He was promising on the night in which He broke bread with the disciples and told them that they were going to create that new nation of people, a new covenant of people who will walk with Him forever. Our eyes have to be open in order to see it. That's the promise of God too. I want you to sing with me. The song that is in your bulletin. Open my eyes. The light has come. And tonight we celebrate that in the Lord's Supper. That our eyes are open to the new character. Of the
Sir, you want to come up here and help me? Today we're going to do Lord's Supper in just a little with a little different elements. I promised Addie. Addie wondered why she had apple juice, and we all did grape juice. Of course, she's allergic to grape juice. And so uh, she was said, well, when are we going to do it my way? So I told her we would do it on the night in which we uh, have the uh, communion together and remembering Monday Thursday. We are going to do it Addie's way. So let's dedicate the elements. Lord, we love you. We dedicate these elements to you just as we've been singing about being one body. We pray that that one body will be expressed, Father, from the smallest of us unto the oldest of us, expressing that new humanity that we have until finally, one day, we partake of this together in the kingdom of God. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to come to you. You stay right there and we'll come bring it to you. Okay. All right, you're an Eddie who's cooking. This is not on leaven bread. Something a little different. Body and blood of Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, he gave it to his disciples and instituted that new covenant. This is his body and blood to be remembered. That we are more than simply imitators, but rather it is to remind us that we have a brand new inside. An inside is symbolized by eating it. That we are new creatures. That we are that new humanity of Christianity in the world. Take, eat, and drink.
care for it. We love it, whether it's the reality of the world, and we play it's not a shame. You're just me.